Hi everybody, my name is Jan Dufour and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator living just outside of Louisville, Kentucky. If you watched my video last week, I introduced my broken arm to you. Uh, I am still limited with what I can do, but I did have things planned out, so I think I can give you the idea of how to do it. If you're visiting me on YouTube, if you go to my blog, stampmesilly.com, there will be a project sheet that will have all of the dimensions and exactly how I did it. Um, and watching the video should give you the rest of what you need to know. While we're doing housekeeping, if you have any questions or if you want a free catalog, you can go to jandufor at yahoo.com. If you'd like to purchase any of these items, you can go directly to my store at jandufor.stampinup.net. There will also be a project sheet over there that will have pictures of all of the items that I used, um, etc. So, let's get started. We are using, again, the most, this paper is incredible, All About Autumn, where you have photorealistic pictures on one side and incredibly beautiful uh, foil on the other. This time um, I'm making table favors for Thanksgiving. There are two uh, Ghiadelli squares inside. They fit perfectly. Um, I got this from my upline, who um, Julie DiMatteo, who showed us how to make these. And she put something else in there and I can't remember what they were. I think they were like cookies of some sort. But anyway, I saw the size and went, oh, <laughs> Ghirardelli chocolates. So anyway, these are table favors that will be at each set. Um, I'm, I'm using some of the, the paper that it was beautiful, like these beautiful pictures. But when I was stamping, I really couldn't think of anything to use them for. So um, it worked out perfect for this. I am also using the die set scalloped contour dies and I'm using the largest one that has all of the scallops on the outside and I am using um, the 2023-2025 in color jute trim. Um, these colors are so fall like anyway so they go with just about every single sheet of paper that is in that stamp or in that uh, DSP. I'm also using, um, I chose Cajun Craze to put on here just as a little bit of contrast. It pulls out the colors. Obviously, uh, you can use something different. I always recommend that you go a little bit darker. So, for example, I'm going to use that on the orange, uh, the pumpkin pie, excuse me, um, and still do it with this just because it's a darker color and I think it will go better. All right, so I will take a picture Again, I can't stamp because I can't open this thing. Oh, well. Um, let me see if I can lift up. I'm going to move this out of the way. My. Ah, uh, yes. I can touch things. I just can't lift things or apply any force with that hand whatsoever. I can't apparently even pick up things. All right, here we go. I'm just going to put this in here. I see that there is a glare off of the light. There, that should be better. Um, so this is what it looks like when you die cut the largest size. Um, I went ahead and I wrote some notes and the measurements on here. The caveat to it is when you do these first ones, if you stick it all the way up in the corner, there is not a groove to do it at two and one eighth. It's about that. But the biggest important thing, it says count five. You need to count one, two, three, four, five. And you want that uh, seam or score line to be in between. So as long as it's up against something, when you score it, it will be fine. Same thing with this one, one, two, three, four, five. It's not actually in a groove until you move it a little bit. Once you find the groove, go ahead and pull it down. As long as it's flat up against the edge, you'll have a straight seam. Um, it's a little bit easier, but it's the same premise. Counting two, I think it actually does line up with seven eighths. Yeah, it, this one, it, when you're doing it this way, that actually does line up to seven eighths, but just remember count two. Same thing for here, count two, and it just happens to fall right at three. So really it's just these two that don't 
fall exactly correctly. Um, I'm going to give this a shot. We'll see what happens. If not, I'll walk you through the rest of it. Uh, make sure I'm on the right side. So again, counting five. One, two, three, four, five. So I want it here, but I want it in a groove, which is here. And then I, I push this up against so it's straight across the top. So I know that my score line will be straight. And then one, two, three, four, five. I want it here. I just have to find a groove and then I score it. So I've got my two score marks there. Then I rotate it. And again, I as I said, I, I think it comes right at seven eighths, but again, it's two, two of the loops and you'll score down and two of the loops, and that is at three. So this way it's much easier because you actually have a me measurement. Um, so that gives you the pocket that we're gonna make. So let me get rid of this. I, again, I apologize, it takes me a little bit longer to move things around because I can only use one hand. All right, here we go. So now we have to fold and burnish this. I have to do everything across my body, it's very strange. Go ahead and do that side and then this side. And then these two. This is a very simple box, which is kind of fun. Um, and we are also, oops, did I burnish that other side? We are also like taking advantage of the um, the scallops because we want to make sure that it fits when it comes together. Um, we're going to take our snips and we are gonna cut along these two lines. Again, it's between the scallops. I'm just gonna clip it straight right down the center groove. Uh, I'm not um, making any of a wedge out of it at all. I'm just right down the center. And that's so that we can maintain our scallop edges. So that's gonna fold up this way. Oops. This is very fun one-handed. Okay, so we don't care about these scallops and you can actually, if you want to, cut them off. Um, I think Julie did, it, they're not bothering me, so I'm gonna leave them there, especially one-handed. <laughs> All right, so then these will fold in. So you, you want to glue this side and this side. And I'm, I'm gonna try, folks, I really am. I can't put any pr pressure on it. Nope, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna use my teeth. All right, there we go. Hey, when there's a will, there's a way. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on here and then I'm just raising this up. So I'm bringing the bottom cut line of this up to the fold line over here. So I'm just rotating it up. Again, you know, you might get a little bit of glue that comes out where the scallops are. It's down below and you're gonna be covering it up so it doesn't really matter. So there's that side. And we're gonna do the same. They're identical front and back, so you don't have to choose which is which right now. It doesn't really matter. You are gonna to have to decide on the little squares that you put out on there. There's no measurements for this particular box because we're using the scallop, um, the largest scallop. Now, when you put it together, it's almost exactly in the right space. It's not quite. And it does highlight the little um, scallops along the, the side. So by folding it this way, um, as opposed to putting these on the inside, which you can also do, it's just easier if you do it this way, this becomes the front. So I'm gonna put glue, but I don't wanna put it near the scallops because that'll just make a mess. So don't put your glue on this piece. Put it up here where you know there are no scallops. And then you can fold it hold it in space in place and it's so close that it doesn't matter that it's not exact on here it's just cute the way it is and then go ahead and do the same thing on this side ow <laughs> pardon me ow uh, i twisted it which i'm not supposed to do all right there we go and fold that down and again they are so very close and i'm just gonna go ahead and lay this down I can't push with my fingers, so I'm gonna use my bone folder, stick it in there, make sure that the glue is set. 
correctly. There you go. That's good. So you have your little box, and now you know with the scallops going towards the back that this is your front. Now, Julie laughingly said, I picked my favorite one, my favorite piece, and these... Um, these are cut, and did I measure them? I did somewhere, but I don't have them. So I'm going to tell you the measurements, and it will be on the project sheet. Let's see. I can't see this. It's two inches by one and three quarters. Again, I will have the measurements out there. Don't pick. Go ahead. Pick your favorite. I like this one the best. So that means I'm putting this in the back. And the reason is, is because I'm going to put this here and then I'm going to put a sentiment on, on top of it. And so there's no reason for me to keep it um, my favorite. Again, they're all beautiful, but you know what I'm saying. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and glue that if I can, if I can use all my fingers correctly. Well, I got a phone call in between, so uh, hopefully this isn't too disjointed. We put the front or the back, depending on which one you decided you liked the best. I'm gonna go ahead and put the one I wanted to see the most. This is, I gotta use my mouth. Ah, sorry. Um, so I decided this is the one I want to be able to see after all of the sentiment is on the front. So I'm gonna just lay that there, let that sit. So this is actually the back, but it has the prettiest picture. You don't have to do that. That's just what I decided I wanted to do. Now on the side, I have two different pieces. Again, the measurements will be on the project sheet. But there's two looks you can have. Um, one of them is 13 sixteenths. I know it's a terrible thing. Sixteenths, I'll show you on a big fat ruler. So this one actually has even more than that, but on your Stampin' Up! ruler, when you or any ruler or trimmer, it'll have a one and a two. In the middle is half. The two longer lines are quarters. The short ones in between are eighths. And each of the little other ones are sixteenths. So if you're doing 13 sixteenths, you're going to go all the way up to 12, which would be three quarters, and then one more. Um, and the reason they're, they're that precise, if you will, is so that you can fit it on there. So the bigger one is 13 sixteenths by one and seven eighths, and that will cover the scallops, as you can see here. It leaves the orange border all the way around. And um, then we have a, whoops, I'm knocking this all over. Then we have a smaller one, which would be 11 sixteenths, and you would use that if you wanted the scallops to show. Let me show you up close. And I think that's a cute look. So I'm probably gonna be using this. Um, I can't cut down the other one right now, so we're just gonna put that aside and pretend that we did glue it. Now, the sentiment that I'm using is from a very best occasions. It has really, really nice things, and we're using Endlessly Grateful. It's got some, you know, Christmassy ones, you know, Sparkle, Christmas, Happy, White, Merry, Bright. Um, but it also has Sending You Smiles for Every Moment of Your Special Day. You Make My Life Happier, Thinking of You, Love You, Mean It. I like that one. Uh, you're the best ever. Happy birthday. Um, so there's a lot of good sentiments on this one. So I'm using Endlessly Grateful. I'm using our double oval, and I'm using the biggest scallop one. And I just punched out um, an oval in our uh, basic white. Um, I think I told you, I, and now I can't remember after the phone call, but I usually go a little bit darker. So this is um, Cajun Craze, and I am popping it up on dimensionals. Oops. Man, I'm just starting using this thing and I'm very grateful I didn't fall and break a hip, but this is a pain. The other thing you can do, and I think I did it on this one, yeah, which you can't really see very much. I should have used a different color, but there's a trick and I can't open this, so you're just gonna have to 
pretend with me, but you can take the edge of this and literally roll it in the ink pad. I've shown you this trick, trick before, and it leaves a very, very little bit of color all the way around. So for instance, in this one, I really wish I could open it. Maybe I can, let me try. I don't know, I can't. <laughs> Maybe if I do it this way. This is not the way to open the stamp pad, by the way, but, oh, did it. Okay, probably got ink all over me too, but. <laughs> I hope you're having as much fun as I am. Okay, so what you do is you literally roll it. You let it sink a little bit. That's how you get some of the color on there. And just roll it and roll it. Oops, I want to make sure I get it all. Roll it. And then, as you can see, there's a little bit of color on the edge, and that makes it very pretty. I'll try to close that later. Um, it does take a second to dry, so be careful. But that way, yeah, that's the one I want. That way, when you put it down, oop, as you can see, there's a little extra color just around the edges. And then, to finish it off, um, I did two things. I used uh, adhesive back solid gems, the same that I used last week. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Let's try this. <laughs> this is an adventure. I just got this thing yes or today. I, uh, I broke it yesterday. But I'm just gonna take a small little gem, maybe, and I'm just gonna put it there because every little thing needs a gem, right? So we'll put that aside. I am not tying a bow today, I can tell you that. Um, the squares, if you, I, I do bend over the tops to put them in, just mostly so that they don't pop over. I mean, it's okay if you're not putting a ribbon on it, but if you are putting a ribbon on it, I would put the two folded edges sides together. Kind of stick that down in there. And that'll, they'll stay nice once you put the ribbon in. So, and I am using, again, uh, the 2023 to 25 in color jute trim. Um, really good fall colors. And all I did was I, from the outside, went through the center one. Remember there was five that we were using on each side. One trick I would tell you, even that up, this is about 12 inches, I measured it. Um, I, this is not gonna happen, but I'm gonna try anyway. Um, I did not pull this really tight. In other words, I could bring these sides a little bit more together, but I chose not to. And then, oh, maybe I can do this. Look at me go. Uh, okay, I can't pull it tight. But there you go. You get the idea. And these are gonna be table favor favors at our Thanksgiving meal. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it is not too annoying that I have not been able to exactly show you everything that I'm doing, but I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks, I will have more mobility and I will be able to do a little bit better job on my videos. Thanks so much for following me. Bye.